Hello, everyone. I just realised I've, I've uh, let the desktop music come through as well. Oh, well, leave it through. I haven't done this in a week and a bit. So this was actually a little bit odd, to be honest. But how are you guys? How are you? Also, what looks quite odd is that I've always done a custom thing for this game. And uh, it looks really dark. But it actually is the same sort of brightness as the game, so whatever. So how are you guys? Hope you're having a good day or whatever you're doing. So my phone's going crazy because I follow so many people now, including uh, New Dengs Gaming, who, if you've never watched, please go watch. Um, I've got loads of people going live at once at nine o'clock, so my phone's just gone crazy. Hello, Callista. How are you, darling? We haven't spoken ages. Literally, been, what, one week? since we've last discussed things and it feels like a lifetime. You'll be happy, Callista. You'll be very happy. Come Saturday, we're doing Dragon Age Origins Awakening. I am denied. I am denied if I was going to do Pillars of Eternity for two nights a week. Uh, but no, no, no. Oh, yeah. I I actually um I have a custom board for Dragon Age as well, which I'm still changing one or two elements for. But yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to go a bit the, the extra mile. The ones for um Grim Dawn haven't changed yet, but I'm trying to go the extra mile on this playthrough. And without further ado, I should probably actually uh <laughs> check the game, shouldn't I? That's really really bad. Sorry. I <laughs> oh crap. Right, one second. <laughs> when it all goes wrong, eh? There we go. So yeah, this is Windows 10, by the way. So Windows 11, by the way. So yeah, quite cool. Um, there we go. That all went completely wrong. I've been practicing, and I just turn off the um, the uh, the game window when I'm practicing making my surround that sort of stuff. Because otherwise you literally see a version of yourself, version of yourself, version of yourself. So it's like the Matrix or Inception. It goes into itself loads. So I turn it off. I am very good. Thank you for asking. And my week off was, um, well, it was interesting. So I've just upgraded to Windows 11, which had a few, I don't want to say issues. It's, I'm happy with it, but it is a little bit clunky in some aspects. And I love other aspects. The biggest aspect is clunky in is um like the icons in the desktop on that. If the if you put your mouse over an icon on your desktop, sorry, on your on your smart smart bar, wow, taskbar, it kind of like highlights a bit of colour, doesn't it? That can get stuck. Sometimes copy paste is a bit slow. And you'll see actually, even though I don't plan to do that much, when I transition on OBS from scene to scene, it can stutter every now and then. It's all Windows 11 stuff. But I upgraded on last Tuesday. And yeah, just apart from that, just had a week to myself, really, just doing some few things. I haven't really played a game since. Just been chilling. So yeah. Anyways, without further ado, let's get on with this. Um, brand new playthrough. I'm gonna try and um crap, not hit myself in the face with the microphone. I'm gonna try and uh relax on this one, let's say. Um, I adore this game. I've got all the DLC. Oh, you can't see because my my face is in the way, but I've got all the DLC. Um, I've never actually done the DLC, which is quite interesting. I've completed this game twice. Yeah, twice I've completed it, but I've played through to a certain stage a few times. Um, if I had to pick between Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2 to only ever play one ever again, it probably would be number 2, but only because I prefer the combat in number 2 a little bit. But I adore the storyline in this one, so it swings around about. I prefer the storyline for that combat. What are you gonna do? So, I'm gonna watch a new game and let's enjoy. Normal mode, we're not doing stupid, like hard path of the dams. We're just going to normal mode. Nothing crazy. This is a playthrough to be enjoyed rather than to be, oh, look how cool it is, or look how crappy is the game. Thank you. 
Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. I was literally about to leave the room to make myself some noodles when you started the stream proper, so kind of awkward looking for a time I can dash away. The one I press done, which I press now, is character creation. I've already, I've spent a long time trying to work out what I want to do. I've already written down what I want to do, but before the storyline starts, I'm going to be discussing what's on screen. So if you want to run away, now is the time. So there you go. So, male or female? Male. So you have got like the sort of the standard races in this game. Oh, but by the way, I'm going to explain quite a bit about this game at the start because I think it's quite useful because this game is literally what it reinvigorated my love of role playing games. I don't deny or I don't admit I've played through like Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. I've owned them. I own them, special editions of them and enhanced editions and the original box version of all the manuals. I've never really played them though. It's quite poor. Um, but when this game came out, I didn't even buy it initially. I bought it a few months after it came out and I saw people streaming it kind of thing. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll look into that. Properly good decision. Because it's it's completely got me into role playing games again, and it's taught me what I like and don't like about role playing games. So, quite like it. So, human, um, Anuminara, or I'm 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 I, 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 I can't pronounce that one. I'm never able to. I think it's Anuma, but as I am, dwarf, which we're not playing. Sorry, Clister, elf, Olean, and godlike. So they all have their own little traits and that sort of stuff. You can see basically the added attributes depending on which one you pick. I'm going to be an elf. Uh, because I've thought about it. Um, I quite like playing like humanish looking characters. I mean, I love this. Some of the, if I look at the god like here, you got four different versions and they all have like their own different like attributes and that sort of stuff and what you can do with them. Uh, but call me. I don't know, generic. But I like playing things that look human. So, and I realise the elf looks green right now. So, elf, which gives me one dexterity and one perception. And I'll go over those in a minute. Can do wood elf or pale elf? So, a pale elf, which we're not going to be, would get elemental endurance, and they would have um, increased burn and freeze damage reductions. A wood elf, however gets distant advantage. So against any enemy that is more than four meters away, wood elves gain a bonus to accuracy, deflection, and reflex. We're going to be playing a cipher in this game, and ciphers can be... Well, actually, let me explain how ciphers work. So what ciphers do is when they deal their normal sort of damage, whether that be melee damage, range damage, whatever, they siphon... Um, they use a soul whip and siphon power and use that power to cast spells. It's kind of unusual because when I hear them described, some people go, they're a caster class, like a mage or a priest. Other people say they're not like that way inclined. They're more like a melee class, but it all depends how you want to run them. Um, I describe them as a caster, which can be melee or ranged, but they're not bound by so many uses of a spell per encounter or per rest. They, at the start of combat, have an, an allowance and you can build up by doing damage and you use it kind of thing. So that's how they work. And, and greater spells and bigger spells meet, need greater focus. I think it's focus anyway. And the reason I'm picking the Wood Elf is because we're going to try and play range. So with bows, uh, arbicuses, pistols, that sort of stuff. 
So Cypher, and just to read this, um, a recent discovery in the Eastern Reach, Cypher's once called, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, Mindhunters by the Glanfathans. Cyphers have the ability to directly contact and manipulate another person's soul or psyche, using an allies or the enemy's essence as the focus of their magic. Though most ciphers are still found in the Eastern Reach, practitioners of the techniques have spread throughout the known world. They are gaining acceptance over time, but are generally distrusted, especially by the uneducated. So starting ability is ciphers um, can directly target allies and enemies with powerful soul focused effects these powers cost focus which ciphers build through the use of the soul whip now i i used to like not play a cipher actually i've never played a cipher in pillars of eternity one in pillars of eternity two i always stay away from them because i never understood them and minor spoiler alert, in pillars of eternity 22 one of your companions if you choose to use him is a cipher and I always think, oh, Soul Whip, you know, that's not, I've got to cast all the time and gain focus. It just happens in, like as you do damage. It's like a passive ability, so it's quite cool. So, Stealth plus one, Law plus one, Mechanics plus one. Um, it's useful to know what these are. So Stealth, it sounds exactly what it is. You can hide, you can get close to enemies before they detect you, that sort of stuff. Law allows you, I mean, there are some scripted, instances where you might need law and some of these um invisibilities but law is mainly for using like um casting um spells that are like from parchment i can't remember the exact name but like parchment you know things written down to one single use things and mechanics is used for lock picking uh disarming traps that sort of stuff uh, the other two are athletics which can be used for scripted instances um and the other one oh and athletics by the way can help you in like um to do checks and that sort of stuff um and also um stealth to not stealth survival which when you rest you can pick like a buff if you will and yeah i'll show you when i rest because I'll, I'll do it a bit now, if you look here, um, each class starts with an amount of endurance, health, accuracy, and deflection. Now, endurance is what you basically have before you're knocked out in combat. Uh, health, that's your health. That's that's quite standard. So you can get knocked out, you can resurrect, you can get knocked out again, and your health will go down. Endurance comes back after every bout of combat. You, If you've been knocked out you have an injury um health is does not come back after combat you have to rest to get health back accuracy is um how much or how how often you like to hit and there's a calculation i can't remember what it is but it's like accuracy um minus defense divided by something or other it's basically how how likely you are to make a hit and if it hits a crit, if it's a graze, if it's a miss, that sort of stuff. And deflection is the opposite. Um, so the cipher actually starts with quite low statistics, apart from accuracy, but it's fine. Because to be honest, not many actually. I think I think I feel like the barbarian that has like very high on endurance and health. But you see deflection is really low. The cipher's average deflection, that sort of stuff. So it swings around about really. Okay, next. So you can see here, you've got levels of powers. And at the start, I obviously get to pick, well, it's two powers I get to pick. And every time you level up, you get to pick more. Um, so the ones we can start with, I mean, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but ones I like to start with is Whisper of Treason. Because I can get someone to come over to my side for... 10 seconds. Charm them for 10 seconds. It does not always take, but it's useful. Um, and a mind wave, which basically it affects a target and then it blasts out from behind them. It's quite cool. And as I'll be ranged with doing it, um, I'll get a bit of a bonus as well. So our attributes. Might, is how much damage you do, and that affects if you're using melee damage, if you're using magic damage a lot. 
constitution, your health, or basically your endurance and health. Dexterity, um, that is your action speed and reflex. It used to do something else as well, but I can't remember. I think they changed it. Perception, um, that's uh, how much, how you can use in scripting instances, but also it's how we can see on screen your interrupt chance, your accuracy, and your reflex. Intellect, that is how long spells last for. Um, so if you're a debuff or a buff on someone, it's that how it works. Welcome back, Callista. And um, how big the air effect is, well, you can actually see the air effect grow and shrink depending on your intellect. And resolve is basically, it's kind of defensive mechanism, so your concentration against spells, deflection, that sort of stuff. Now, oh, I've got to read them, but I've already worked out what I want to do. So I want to put my might all the way up. I'll put my resolve all the way down. Now, the reason I'm doing that, and it looks like a min-maxing, I'm sort of am a little bit. I'm not planning for my Cypher to be the focus of many attacks. There are ways I can make sure he's got some concentration anyway. But because he starts with quite low statistics anyway, this doesn't detriment as much as you think. And I want to put Intellect all the way up to 18. And now, even though it says a silver star here, which says, like, you know, dexterity is really good for this class because you get your action speed up. It's not actually as good as you think it is, because, yes, you can hit more. But you might think it makes more focus. It's kind of true. But actually, perception, um, you have an interrupt chance, um, the more accuracy and that sort of stuff, and the more chance to actually hit on those spells is far more valuable. Maybe not for all the whole game, but at least at the start of the game. So 18, 10, 10, 18, 18, and 3. So now I get to get my culture. This doesn't actually... I mean, just saying you know, each culture will add like, another value to one of these attributes. And I want the living lands to come up the might one. This does come up in scripting instances about like some of your background and that sort of stuff. But it's not a pre not as prevalent as you could expect it to be in a game like this. You would think, oh wow, you know, my, my culture, what's it gonna be? Like, how is it gonna transpire and how is it how is it gonna translate? Not as much as you think, unfortunately. In the later, in the later game, number two, much more, but not in this game. So I've just picked it for basically the buff to might. Hello, buddy, how are you, mate? How you doing? Uh, my background, so this actually adds, uh, this actually adds um, to those skills. Um, I didn't write, did I write this down where I was? I didn't, that's interesting. Well, do it on the fly. So I like mechanics because mechanics allows me to, like I say, disarm traps, open locks, but also, and I believe this did change in Pillars of Eternity 2. Mechanics also allows you to detect things. When Pillars of Eternity 2, I believe perception is also doubled up to be able to detect things. If that makes sense. Path of Dam Run, no. Normal run. It's all about the, uh, the, the, the let's play, mate. Not Path of the Dam, mate. I will one day build up the courage to try triple count triple crown solo run which for those who have no idea what that is it's path of the damned on iron man mode so basically it's a hard difficulty level iron man mode so if you die your save file goes you don't have any additional help so no tooltip help you apart from the very beginning of the game where you have to have a party you don't use any other companions And is that that's it, isn't it? So it's Iron Man, Path of the Damned, and no companions, and that's how you complete the game. And that's called a triple a triple crown solo because your triple crown means the high difficulty levels, and you do it solo. So, um, so yeah, so law, like I said before, helps with spells and sort stuff, and like reading parchment but mechanics i really like so i want the mechanics to be quite high now <sighs> athletics is really useful for some script instances but i'm trying to think actually what i want here survival is really good as well actually 
Because I think, I'm trying to think, is, is it tell you in here? Yes, it does. So, if, oh, you might not be able to read that. I might be a little bit too faint. So, every point up to six um, allows you, when you rest, to do something different. So, point one is damage reduction. Generally, I think it's 10%. Two is received healing multiplier. Three is bonus movement. Four is accuracy bonus versus creation type. Five is increased consumable durations. And six is bonus damage versus flanked enemies. Now, you don't get all of them. When you rest, you can pick one. So if you want to number six, you have to get six points here. Then you have to pick it when you rest. If you put like seven points in, for example, the first one has a bigger increase. If you put 12 points in, for example, every one is like stage two, if that makes sense. Survival is really good for damage reduction, but I don't have one at the start of the game. Um, I really like lore. Sorry, sorry, I really like mechanics. That's the thing. And lore and mechanics and merchant. Oh, I just realized scientists and merchant have the exact same thing. I like Drifter, actually. Drifter. You're never quite facing to where you, where you go. Each new town is just a place to rest briefly before moving on to the next. You're more comfortable on the road traveling the world. Stealth at the start of the game called quite cool. Shame there's no survival and mechanics. I'm probably not going to use many scrolls. The scrolls, that's the terminology. Parchment, bloody hell, what am I on about? I'm going to go Drifter. Next. So this is where this, this playthrough gets absolutely unique to me. I'll find it. And don't laugh. You've obviously seen the thumbnail already, but don't laugh. I made... My own thumbnail! Or my own portrait, even. How cool is that? This did cost me to make this. Only in... Uh, toys for my daughter. I had to get... I had to teach my daughter, five-year-old daughter, how to use a camera. So I was on a tripod, I had to, I had to hold the tripod to, to be shaken, press the button, wait a second, press it again, wait a second, let me diff, do a different pose. She even helped me wrap the um the purple blanket, which is actually that on there. Anyway, down there. She she helped me wrap it around me and she put it behind me to make sure it was all good. And she fluffed it up for me. She's five, she's doing all this. And that one there was actually something distracting me when she was doing photos. So I was trying to do like faces and that. And something actually distracted me. But I thought it actually looked quite funny, like a bit gormless, which is quite cool. So naturally I kept it. So I'm just going to make myself look a bit like this. I'll get her some better clothes later. So it's dark. She's probably looking at me that way around, isn't it? No, it's not. I'm a sucker, by the way, for making sure my portrait matches my colours. I, I hate it when it's not. I, I, I really hate it when it's not. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's probably that one there is probably me more me, isn't it? The only problem is I didn't have a shade before. I mean, I'm not their most hairiest anyway, look. But uh, elves don't have facial hair, so my bad. But even when I got into Photoshop, well... It was raw, so I used Lightroom first, and I imported it to Photoshop. I actually researched, like, how... Okay, it doesn't look like a painting like these, for example. But I researched how to make it look more... fantasy-esque, if you will, rather than... Um, rather than photographic. So, I did what I could. And actually, is that the hair I want? Where's the one that's a bit more stubby at the front? Is that the one I want? Hmm. Try to find it. That's probably where I started on, isn't it? Yeah, it's the other one. Kind of like my hair make it a bit long. So, that's that. Benevolent, maybe? I'm here. I'm flattered. Ah! Not a sound. Huh? Follow me. Let's go. Nice and slow. Yeah, follow me. Let's go. I'll take a peek. Yes. Now I am the leader of the group. Hmm. Let's go. Now we get annoying. Quick and quiet. Ready when you are. I'll lead the way. You better run. Quick and quiet. Hmm. Leading the way. Ha! Let's keep quiet. I'm here. I shall lead us. No. 
That's more Let us end this. my tone, let's be honest. <laughs> Taking a piss on myself there. I'll go on ahead. Just say the word. I think cocky. Yeah, cocky. Right. <sighs> Bambi or Bam? No, Bam. I was thinking the other day what I'm going to call it, but no, it's Bam. It's Bam. Are we ready? Yeah, oh, your daughter has a future in photography, clearly. <laughs> you have no idea. Literally, like, so we set up a studio downstairs. I mean, like, I'm quite quite fortunate. I've got a decent camera. I've got lights. I've got clothes that I can, like, dress up in um, and stuff like that. And so we do this first shoot downstairs. We're for about an hour and a half, two hours. And we were, like, dressing up. She obviously, she was dressing up, so I was taking pictures of her for fun. And then not one of them really came out how I wanted it. So I came upstairs and just behind me there, I hung up sheet up. We tried it again, like two, three days later kind of thing. And we got a good shot. So except here we go. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red moustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Just to know this game is voiced quite well, but there is still quite a bit of reading I'll do, so. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Whole areas crawling with hut dwelling types who would be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? Touch of the rumbling rot could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a springberry, about the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. So... Uh, Sparful is someone who will walk off in a minute and go get some stuff for me. But we are asking questions first. So, where to find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Uh, what are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and Arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Sorry about the tutorial message that came up then. Who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins, tell you that much. What are those huge rocks coming out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. Played on Path of the Damned, the later fights get nuts on it. They do, they do. Um... It's probably worth noting at this point, actually, this game, as in Pit of Eternity 1, not number 2, but number 1, there is no bonus XP for doing fights. You can completely, well, unless you have to do a, a fight that's storyline driven, if you will, or quest driven, you can just avoid them if you want to. There's no bonus for doing it. Yes, you might lose some loot. You might not get good gear because you won't be doing fights. But there's no bonus. The bonus XP, and the XP generally, is by doing storyline-driven things, quest-driven things, completing things, rather than fighting. And I've got to admit, it's quite a nice touch. 
Uh, they changed it in number two to you get a little bit of XP when you're doing fights. But yeah, there's no there's no XP per fight on this one. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. I'll go see about his berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. Kalisha. Kalisha! He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get right. going before you keel over. Stay quiet. So. Yeah? You'll know to show away if you've watched my uh, Tyranny playthrough. It's the same. Um, although, <laughs> really, the controls for making things fast and slow are S and D rather than Tyranny, they're plus and minus, which makes more sense in this one. Let's see what's in here. That'll do it. Just a habit, I'm going to do some hunt. Oh, well, some gathering around here. And. Maybe help. Anyone need supplies? This is just habit me doing this. Sundries for sale. So, let's give myself that potion there and that there. I mean, there's some people who sell this sort of stuff to get as much money as they can to start. But I'm going to play through it like a storyline driven game rather than the perfect playthrough, if it makes sense. 20 years ago, people who dropped dead with mages using guns and armor. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, Gorn's Plague is a additional item that uh, I don't think you used to start the game with this, but you can put it on, it's a ring, and you can get, uh, it's a heal. It just heals 15 endurance. You can use it twice per rest. I ain't gonna kick a gift horse in the mouse. I'm not gonna have Cosmo follow me, which is a little miniature pig. I'm not gonna follow me, sorry. Put him in the, uh, stash. Stop that. So let's just run around here, explore the area. Shh. What's quite nice about this game actually is when you're sneaking, you sneak a lot faster than Tyranny. I did notice in Tyranny you snuck extremely slow. I'll go on ahead. Um not looking forward to trying to lift that thing tomorrow. Look around. Exploring the general area. It's very difficult to like be surprised by the start of this bit of game because I've done it so many bloody times. So what's Bam's personality like? He is a drifter. He has never stayed anywhere more than a short while. He's cocky, a bit sarcastic. But most of all, he's quite... He is... How to put in this? He's got a good head in his shoulders. He knows right from wrong. He won't always follow right from wrong. If passion gets through, or he's, you know, or the situation calls for it. But he's uh he's loyal, and he um. I, I guess he's quite benevolent as well. He, he knows what he can't, can and can't do. And he looks after his friends. So, first encounter to Young Wolf. So, I get to show you the uh, Cypher now. So, if you look here, he's got seven focus. So, if I just get him to attack the wolf. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. 
Your if he goes up to 10, 13, but after the battle, I believe it resets itself. Yep, 7. So I didn't Just use any the powers word. there. It wasn't required. This and these are the berries I need. i got to be talking here. Yeah? You're kind of a mystery to this caravan. Just some kind of wanderer, the way I hear it. I quite like this, actually. You can really wind her up. <laughs> so not sacrificing babies then. Oh, Callista, you're going to enjoy this game. And I'm not even going to explain to you why you're going to enjoy it, but in I reckon about half an hour, 40 minutes-ish, you're going to be going, I, I know what you mean, Bam. I know what you mean. Hold that thought. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Anyways, you kind of have a mystery to the rest of the caravan. Just some kind of wanderer, the way I hear it. Ah, uh, but, but, but let's have a look. Uh, sure, I wander into the lives of fools, talk to them about their money. No, not to that one. You have to be when people are looking for you. This is your business. Um, that sort of thing tends to happen with orphans. Yeah, let's let's play the orphan card. Yeah, how did you come to be here? Um, I'm a self-made orphan. My parents got reserved. No, 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 no. I've never, I never had a place to call home. Still looking. Drifter makes sense. You got quite a lot on your mind. Then hopefully things work out in the end. But in my experience, they don't always. Been a long time since I've been this way. But I, I always like, uh, yeah. But I always did like it. Uh, Lord Roderick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You're here to settle, like the rest of the lot. Um, I hadn't given it much thought. No harm in that. May as well see the place first. So you must have some other plan in mind for coming this way. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Let's be a proper drifter. Completely spontaneous, huh? Interesting. Well, there's obviously there's probably no hurry to make your mind up. You've got the an in and gilded veil that will put you up as long as you need. Also, my sister tells me. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odema will give you an earful. Odema will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. All right, let's head back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfall was getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like and when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Stream is just done that way. Come on, let's go get your water. So what Lord Roderick's offer is, and you'll find out a bit more later, he's offered um, homes to people and that sort of stuff and like lives, etc. So that's what she's on about. That's why a lot of people are traveling that way. You can see straight away from Tyranny to this game, this game is far more uh, traditional role playing and traditional visuals, that sort of stuff. More real world. looting bodies as you do okay where's the bridge there's the bridge pretty change this so she's actually uh doing that there you go what a surprise Sparful went home. this is recent stay not good now i think there is a gun in here which crap i'm not gonna use it but it's a gun in the last there we go the disappointer <laughs> I forgot what it's called. Um, I'm just going to grab all. And grab a bit of beer there. Now, if I was playing a super duper, like, run with, like, harder settings, I would actually use that beer because it gives um, damage reduction for six minutes. But I ain't doing that. Uh, let's give me everything. Now, some people, when they play, like, cast the classes and that sort of stuff they, they give um well our armor basically has is there's there's light medium and heavy and each one has a different range of uh damage reduction but also recovery speed so generally speaking um it, it kind of goes like you know light armor has lower recovery speed medium has so much and high has the biggest recovery speed so it like slows you down because you're obviously wearing bulky armor and that sort of stuff there are some things that would change that statistic. 
but there are damage reductions there as well and on these ones he doesn't say it but oh, you'll get some items which will be like uh oh he does that in if i look into it you get like so much damage reduction certain elements or sort of uncertain attack types so you can see there and you can enchant most items as well to make them better than they are but we'll come to that much later in the game let's grab this you crouch at the riverbank you dip your water skin to cool water where Callista waits nearby. Keeping watch. As you rise, you notice know to look up sharply towards a tree line. Out of the tree emerges Sparkle, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there are strange there is a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves forward, with a laboured breath. Sparkle, are you alright? Sparful toes catches a rock and he collapses forward in a heap. A feathered shaft of an arrow planted in his shoulders like an enemy flag. Shit. Ambush. Right. I want you to Clister and you. What's the name? So now I've got a little bit there, I can shade some of these. So I can do Whisper of Treason or I can do Mind Wave. I'm going to do Mind Wave. And boom. Ah. So that would have hit people behind it if they were there. So you can see there my endurance went down. We have to get back to camp. But my health went down a little bit as well. Let's loot them. Sorry, it's going to quickly because my wife just sent me a text and she knows I'm streaming, so I want to know what's going on. Okay. Ready when you are. Okay, so rush back to camp. We're being attacked. Oh, oh. Right, I wonder if I can do Whisper of Treason. I need ten to his first one, so let's just attack. Ready when you are. Yep, Whisper of Treason. We're doing that on there. He's on my side now for a moment. You better run. Right, let's get this way. And let's do that on that. I like the cipher. Ah, uh, so a lot of stuff we'll put on the stash. We'll worry about sorting through it later. Yeah. Okay. Save. Yep. Right. All around you lie the massacred remains of other travelers, peppered with the arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug eyed and filthy. Callista puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous vapour. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies um, as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering, is, is towering and severe with a thick beard, tasseled in knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognise as Hayodim. The last of the caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for fights. You will lose. So it's quite cool. So I can use like lore and that sort of stuff to like help me out here. And because I've got a little bit of lore, I can use it. So I'm going to say the ruin has not been solid by our hands, um, men of Glanfath. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. So you can see here, I can do loads of things based on my tributes. Nice custom portrait, backstory screams, I murdered someone. <laughs> I murdered someone accidentally. <laughs> um, we're going to say, because I'm quite cocky. Um, let's have a look. 
Actually, now I'm using my intellect. Judging by the strings of your animal teeth around your neck, I'm guessing you're a worshiper of so, uh, Galloway. If Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? The man frowns and motions as if to swing his axe. Hayden winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head and treats. Of course, but he would not. It is by the command of all the gods we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's consistent with their beliefs or because it's what you were told? The man glares. It has always been known by to my people. I see. And what of Galloween's edict? That bloody edicts already. That weakens that weakness and age must purge must be purged by youth and strength. You think Galloway would want some mouldy, crumbling stone to survive long after their builders have turned them to dust? He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did. Just not you personally. But why would that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, the man's grip falters to his axe handle. He nearly fumbles it, affording head in the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. Hello, ding, dings, 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 dings. Hi, dings, you're right. I'm the kind of player who reloads save to go through dialogue choices. I used to do that, but I've kind of got the thing now where unless I genuinely accidentally pick one I didn't mean to do, I just kind of go with the flow. I, might, I mean, every now and then I might reload, but not, not often. Right, so for the set time being, we've got this bloke here. We sh he's a rogue. Blinding strike. You can go up there. And you can do How can I help? Um, so if I go... Mind wave. Like that. <laughs> he's dead. I'm doing your mate yourself. How did your premier go tonight? Your enemy lies sprung on the ground, unable to rise. His companion is now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath the choking sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eye roll back and he closes them. Good, good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile. Unpending pots and... Sorry, upending pots and rattling tents like the angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin where it pierces you and feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Seated within a wagon's will amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across her chest and bow, Odemus body stirs. With great effort, he raises his saging, sorry, sagging head, and his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! Straining against the gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step. You set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a long, with the last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Hayden trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by an early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers, who had been feigning death, lunges for Hayden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hayden lashes out against his fatigued assailant, but struggles to break hold. They are close to you. If you're in position, you will have a good chance of hitting your mark. Fire at the attacker. Your aim is true and the hit jars Hayden loose. Lurching to his feet, Hayden clambers up the base of the rocks and hits the tops. However, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to ho catch hold of it, securing his other hand. You pull the uh, with waning strength and it feels like your arms will be jerked from the sockets. They hold just long enough for Hayden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. 
there's a deep um uh there's a deep uh, renaissance oh sorry uh of the swelling wind now uh you feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest as though it would shake the marrow from your bones each new gust menaces the old stones before you loosening connections unsettling balances as you dart beneath the old archway the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight boom was that a beerwick had to be then we're lucky to be alive and we're the only ones we can't stay here there could be another collapse we're not getting out that way anyway let's get further inside So, yeah, another team, team member, our companion now. That should be far enough. <sighs> but what now? We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. Okay, so what happened out there? Windstorm of a kind that only you only get near um, air gland bath. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. The Galanfathon word is Beowick. To them, it, it's the God's way of reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their own way out. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours? Who attacked us? Galanfathons. Those be the hut dwellers Adima warned us about, you about. Look to be fangs of Galloway, who were the twitchiest of the lot. They go ruin to ruin, looking for fights with colonists. Poor Dima. I think he half expected this once we lost the main road. The Glanfathans said we trespassed in the ruins. Don't believe that. Edema was would never allow it. But as much as the Fangs are hotheads, Glanfathans won't attack without being provoked. Either they saw something and they got it got the wrong idea, or all those looters in here with us that's not something we need right now mm, let's get going so wonder who was here right See i'm trying not to just sort of go on autopilot here i literally know the start of the game quite well but genuinely i can't remember most of this game i've completed it twice like i said but it's a big game and it's been a four or five years since now. Four, maybe, yeah, about four and a half years since I last played it properly. Maybe in five. So it's been a while. So I'm just looting right now. Have I got a uh, fatigue? Oh, a strange illness. So I'm going to rest and use a, uh, a camping supply. And you'll notice here, so this is what I was talking about with survival. So my character and what's his face, Hayodin, doesn't have any survival. So we don't get to choose. But you'll notice here that uh Callista? No. I can't remember her name. Uh she has two points, so she can do damage reduction and heal multiplier. Let's do damage reduction and rest. Oh. Ah, I forgot to get rid of that. Oh well. But you can see here, she's got the damage reduction and that sort of stuff. Just going to run about these ruins. Trying to find the way out. If I sneak, I, I can actually run quite quickly when sneaking still, which is quite nice. Um, let's do it like that. Hello, Zirup. A trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobbly elbows and thin ribs show through his scaly flesh. You recognize it as a zero. It watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged sighs. Slowly back away. If we go near it anyway, it attacks us. Oh well. Goodbye, zero. So something you will find that I'll have to get in the practice of doing again 
is sneaking everywhere. Wait. Do you hear that? Because you only find and see traps and hidden objects if you are sneaking. So we, we're looting this bloke here and we've got a, a Inguithian Relief Dream, which will come into practice in a minute. Now what I do want to look at is if that crossbow is actually better than I've got already in terms of damage it is. It's slower, but let's put the crossbow on. So my character is going to do damage, obviously. But it doesn't need to be quick. It just needs to be powerful it does and build up focus. To that, with the other one, I was only getting like four points maybe for focus. Now I'm getting 20. I can now mind blast it. Or ready when you are. It's dead before I get to do so. Be quiet. That looks be weak. Quiet. Could be. Uh, use the hammer and chisel. I obviously, I obviously picked it at some point. Continue chiseling the wall. Interactions like that, I won't bother reading out because it's be quiet. all the time. It's just there's a wall I can chisel I can again. Scout ahead. See what's around the corner. Oh, they saw me. All right. <laughs> Just say the word. Oh, so I want this bloke here not to go near me. So I really have a lot of health. Come on, hate him. Hey, go. Ready cool. when you are. I'll be quiet. So looking around, see what's in here. There is something really boring they're doing in the mid, by the way, guys. Sounds like the storm passed. Ready when you are. Which is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo loads of traps, but I'm gonna do it when I'm by myself, which will happen soon. Um, because it gets you a bit of XP to begin with. It's only a little bit, but it's worthwhile doing. Spiders, one down, two down. Never know I'm here. Okay. If I miss something, I have missed something. Alright, I'll go back in a minute. Let's just see, take out these spiders quickly. I don't know why spiders are so like prevalent in games. It's almost like Skyrim is spiders at the start. This Your is mom. spiders at the start. Seems to be a go-to thing, doesn't it? I'll go on ahead. Sneaky, sneaky. Yes, I've missed something. Sorry. Completely missed doing something down here. Because I've been doing a lot of testing with this game the last couple of weeks, just literally just open area to see what works and doesn't work. I kind of know this area of my heart. Those tiles look suspicious. Let's be careful. Mmm. Let's be careful. We don't want to set them off. Those suits. Just like the tiles. Nothing so, will slip past me. This room, by the way, is if you're a godlike, you can use this room to do things, but I've never done it, so. Cause spiders made a deal with the devil. Yeah, pretty much. So these things are lesser black oozes and they actually bloody hurt when they hit you. They're genuinely like, they freaking hurt. Ready when you are. So let's try and make sure we uh, That's how it's done. do a lot of damage straight away. Look at that, one hit, look, half a health went. Or half a endurance shape went. I'm actually sure my testing died to them a few times just by not paying attention. Not a problem. Where'd that slime come from? Stay quiet. Don't know, but it's pretty the that gem we picked up earlier. Use the water skin to clear the ooze. Place the gem in the sockets. And we get a secret room. Be quiet. Bloody hell, Not look at that straight away. 
And in here there is. There we go. That's what I wanted to get. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, so minor cloak of protection gives me fortitude, reflex, and will. I get a cape, which I can play the physics and make right around me sometimes. Come on, can I do it? Oh, I can't do it. Oh well. I'm a child. Ignore me. So with this game, like I've been using combat mechanics and stuff that I can use per encounter because it happens to be the class that got will. We'll do that later on when I get a mage and that sort of stuff. I have to be very careful what mage spells I use and when I use them because I only get them back when I rest until they're far higher in level where you get like a few freebies at a level anyway. And you'll see that I'm very cautious of using them. So. So, outside. Four figures stand before an otherworldly apparatus. An ancient structure of chiseled ardra and metallic veins, ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their midst is what appears to be human body, colourless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be a contemplation. Contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well obscured from their view. The figure closest to the machine stands out among them. A thick grey beard frames the face of otherwise hidden features behind, beneath a metallic mask. His faded robes are embroidered with runic languages, unlike anything you've ever seen and he wears a strange black headdress with two preposterous with two protrusions sorry that juts out like wings of some male malevolent creature oathbinder bear witness and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath full to his blood's last drop guide his soul queen that was and regard it among your favor let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother? In the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw, step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet and the air is still. Then, all at once, it erupts with con con a concussive surge. Light floods your vision and you are knocked onto the ground. Your head snaps back as you land and pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into a black unconscious void. You open your eyes to a different place, another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with ardra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unweathered. At the far end of the great pillar of ardra, pieces of the floor, sorry, at the far end, of, at the far end, a great pillar of ardra bear pieces of floor from below. It shimmers, its shimmering texture, giving the illusion of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar, is an apparatus much like the one you've just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined. 
Well, that was kind of a sacrifice, but no babies. Hold out, hold out. It's coming. Your thoughts are yours and not yours. And they seem to exist before you think them. And they're all questions. Pressing questions. Troubling questions. Questions that must be answered or, or. At the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick grey beard in ceremonial, ro ceremonial robe, crowned with a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man. You are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. Clearly with the baby sacrifice already. Yep, she's been there. She's already asked. She wants baby blood. Baby blood and mushrooms. <laughs> Sorry, every time I see that, I'm like cringing a little bit, but it's quite cool. You're awakened to find your um, ma uh, malaise has broken, only to be replaced by something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement f um, flits for your periphery, but when you turn to look, you can see no sign of whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. The figures that the, at the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and blood replaced by cinders and ash. The man who led them is nowhere to be seen. Hayden and Callister lie bloodied on the uneven cobbles, their bodies twisted and naturally in death. You are alone and far from help. Gilded Veil may be your best hope of receiving treatment before your before things get worse. We have a level up. So, per level up, I get skills, class unlocks, and talents, basically. So I've got some stealth already, that's cool. You can see how many points I need to advance stuff. I can save points for next level ups and stuff, and it's sometimes worthwhile doing. And now, I kind of always find it's always good to have one class that's really high in mechanics. And I'll, I can't remember all the companions in this game, but I don't believe any of them have massively high mechanics. So I generally speaking, my, my protagonist character gets high mechanics. You can see here at one point there, the next one needs two points. The next one needs three points. You can see how it works. I want to get mechanics up. I also want some survival. Uh, so I want two points in survival because I want the damage reduction and the healing. But actually, no, for, for right now, I've got one point in survival, I think. And I'll probably just leave it like that, actually. I'll probably keep this points for next time. So I get some more choices here. I'm uh, antipathic. Antipathetic field is if I attack someone, it puts like a... um. A line between me and them so i can move around and it looks at damage enemies the problem is generally speaking my companions get in the way and it kills them so i'm not gonna do that i strike blinds soul shock is like a bomb and tenacious grasp what's that do again cause them to be frightened that ooh, that's gonna be good actually what's the so that looks it's one target okay that's quite cool do you know what? Actually, tenacious, gr tenuous grasp even is going to be good because crowd control is quite cool with these. So let's give that one. And my talents. So yeah, class specific talents, offensive talents, defensive and utility. These last three here, regardless of what you pick, are all the same. You can pick what you want to do. Class ones, you'll see here. The top ones here have like a. Uh, like a cipher sort of like icon, they're unique to his class. But the other ones here, these are lesser versions of talents that other th other classes would use. That's for your mono multi class. I'm not going to multi class. So I want actually something that helps my damage initially. So here we've got modified soul whip, twenty percent more melee damage, twenty percent more range damage. 
Okay. Psychic Backlash. So that is... Once per encounter, I can stun the target. No. Uh, draining Whip. 33% more focus gain. Really? So I've... Do you know what? I think that is there a bug in the game. Because Biting Whip has the effect of 20% more melee and 20% more ranged. Draining Whip shouldn't have the same. Because that should be that. Oh, and Greater Focus, which means I can start with more focus. Oh, sorry. My apologies. I can give myself more focus at the high end. It doesn't continue up and up and up. There's a, there's a floor limit. I'm going to go for more focus gain so I get focus faster. Done. Let's loot the bodies, because why not? And what I'm going to quickly do is really boring, but I'm going to quickly run in and just do all the traps. Excuse me, game. Thank you. Of course, would you expect any less of me? All those better be. Well, all those is better than the other one. <laughs> right, we get on here, and if I go Quick and sneaky play. mode, these are all traps. And some of them give five XP, some of them give As ten, promised. fifteen. As promised. It's just a tiny bit of XP, and it's pathetic, but here. it works. And can remember. You don't get XP for battles in this game. You only get XP for completing quests. So actually having a bit of XP at the start of the game is additional. Can just help you out a little bit. As promised. It, it As takes a promised. second to deal with this. That'll do it. As promised. That's what it is. I've just got a funny feeling, actually. If I look at my settings, auto pause settings, why have all these come off? Um, I want auto pause when. Mm. Enemy spotted. And that's fine. I don't want to stop party me, I just wanted to pause. Hidden object found. That's what I was looking for. It's just so if I find something, it'll pause for me. Right, so let's go to Gilded Vale. Well, actually, let's look at our site first. Let's get to Gilded Vale. Can you see what I mean, by the way, about like my look and feel of my stream? It, it is as dark and as it has the same look and feel as the game. I'm very proud of it. I'm not going to lie. So I'm just gonna. Oh, look, a dry cap. That's a mushroom. And yeah, you get these psychedelic things here. I won't ruin it for you for what I now am, but it's pretty cool, I'll admit. And yes, I'm literally touching like old people, like dead people, and taking their sore flesh off them. It's a thing. I might even this playthrough actually look at my uh, supplies I get and I might actually make some food. Right. Veilwood first, sorry. You can see the map here, all the places we can go. And there are some things not even on it yet, which is quite cool. Fight better after a nap. <laughs> He's telling me to rest. So yes, damage reduction and rest. A little weird dream. Oh, it's night time and it's raining. Fantastic. So just realized I have no athletics so there's actually something I wanted to get but I have no athletics so I can't get it. 
take a look around. Remember, combat doesn't help my XP. It just it lets me grab things and maybe get a few bits and bobs here and there. So I'm not worried about starting fights with everyone. I'll go on ahead. Actually, fair, I don't want to start fights with everyone. He says, he says, as he sees an outlaw. But no, not going to do it. I can't even remember what's in this area, you know that. Right, if I'm looking at my phone, Windows 11 has one annoying trait to it where my multi monitor sets up. I, there's no clock down on the other monitor. I have to keep looking at my phone for the time. Is this a zero place? Yeah, I'm probably not going to take three of them on. I can try, but it probably won't work. Oh, actually, no, let's see if we can do this. Just give myself a bit of confidence. So actually, let's go that one first of all. He's almost dead. Let me then do Whisper of Treason on that one. Oh, this is going to kill me, isn't it? <laughs> and that, kids, is why you don't do that. Oh, did I just load the wrong save? I did. One moment. Um, where's my quick save? There it is. Sorry. First death. Yay. I sort of knew that was going to happen. I wasn't going to win that battle. But that just shows you how weak my character actually is right now. And it's good. It sounds ridiculous. It's good that my character is weak. I'm not... I'm not a superhuman. There's no... There's no... It had, that hasn't, that's not conveyed. Does that mean? So, actually avoiding battle at this stage is probably worth really, really worthwhile. Um, I can't even remember what's here. I'm just looking around. What's that? Oh, is it the outlaw again? It is, yeah. Okay. Instead of going over the bridge, I went round the river. <laughs> Who's that? I didn't stop, so it doesn't look like it's uh, gonna hurt me. Greetings. On your way south, is it? The sooner you clear these woods, the better, I think. My caravan was attacked. I've been trying to get to Gilded Vale. Hard luck, and I'm sorry to hear it. You should be fine from here. There's no missing. The veil, if you keep on the road, you haven't far to walk. You want to keep clear of this place after all. I, we, were just attacked. North of here, me and my friend of mine, we came out here to hunt some deer. Came upon a bear instead, a great monstrous thing. And Pearly, he didn't make it. I don't know what I'll tell his wife. In any case, this forest already cost me a friend. I'm heading home before it takes any else. Mm, farewell. I feel like I'm missing something over here. Nothing will slip oh. past me. Yep, I ain't taking a model wolves, not at this stage. Pillars three when? That's an interesting question. Uh, I don't think they're making pillars three. They've made pillars one, pillars two. However, the new game they're releasing, well, I say releasing, they're still making it, called Avowed. It's far as you can tell from the trailer at least which is not very forthcoming it's um skyrim-esque in the way it looks and feels and controller looks like but i didn't know this until recently it's actually set in the world of aora which is the pillars of eternity world so it's kind of a uh pillars three thing go to veil So, Gilded Vale. This is where we're going to find out what's been going on. <laughs> Dead people.
You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. He glances at the gnarled, leafless monstrosity of a tree next to him. Wow. Do you welcome everyone this way? The only answer you hear is a buzzing flies from the tree. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollowborn child? Clista, your time to listen is now. What are you talking about? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. His lordship's wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn just southwest of here. Hmm. You said something about Hollowborn and Widewind's legacy before? He blinks. I forget you foreigners do not have this curse in your homelands. The Hollowburn, the Hollowburn, the Hollowborn have been a scourge upon the Deerwood for almost 15 years now. Children born without souls. <laughs> Are you happy, Callista? You have your children who suffer. Told you we were disappointed. Um, let's read some comments, sorry. Uh, yeah, I saw the Val trailer, but no claim for soon. Meh, it's kind of hard. I've kind of had enough of Skyrim games. I'll be honest, I haven't played the Skyrim S game since Skyrim. I didn't really get into, um, is it Disfavored, that game there? And I haven't played like, um, uh, what was it? Uh, Deliverance? No. Is it Kingdom Deliverance, man? Or Deliverance Kingdom? Some, some, I haven't played games since that, so I'm quite looking forward to it. And I love the world of the world of the world of Aora, so it's quite cool. Oh my god, it's gonna happen at last. I have full parties and high dialogue, etc. The whole world knows now. I feel fulfilled. <laughs> he shakes his head. Pitiful dumb things that breathe and barely. We do not truly live. Some say the Hollowborn are a disease. Some say they are punishment from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows. But they began spreading after the Saints' War. And so the name Widewind's Legacy is stuck in honour of that foul, blasphemous pretender. Lord Raderick's de decrees may seem strict at times, but he has our best interests at heart. Uh, I avoided Fallout 4, never played it. Uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I, I tried to play for, uh, blah, 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 blah. I tried to play Fallout 3, didn't really like it. Um, to be honest, I've never really played Oblivion, if that helps. Um, my first proper Elder Scrolls game I got into was actually Skyrim. And you can have a go at me for that because I missed Morrowind, I missed Oblivion, that sort of stuff. I own them all, but no, it's um, Skyrim was my go-to game for that sort of era. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's important everyone in Guild of Vale understands our rules. I've been feeling strange ever since a close call with a Bailwick. Is there someone in town that could help? Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an Animancer. However, the only Animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. 
My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Goodbye. Keep out of... Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. Does this affect the Lord's offer for new settlers? I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn. Or a stable for what I care. Find me afterwards. I will know more soon enough. Farewell. So let's read some comments. You guys are really chatty tonight, which is really nice. Uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas are incredible. I've got Fallout 3 somewhere on disc. Um, was it the secure brute or secure ROM, the um, DRM system on the game? It was really pissed me off. Um, but I've never, I very rarely look to play futuristic or apocalyptic role-playing games. I, I kind of like it. It's really cliche. I really like the standard role-playing element of dwarves, elves, mages, sorcerers, clerics. Uh, you know, the generic high fantasy role-playing stuff. That's why I love that sort of stuff. Didn't care for Fallout 4. Fallout 3 is my favorite game. I can't get in Skyrim to save my life. Same, I tried to play through Skyrim many times. I love Skyrim. I played it multiple times. I actually played it so much. Probably can't really play it much anymore. Um, I think before the special edition came out, I think I've only got like four or five more achievements to get in Skyrim. Um, but yeah, I played too much of it. <laughs> so, we're in Guild of the Vale. We came here for settlement. Well, that was the storyline at least. And we ain't found it, so fun. Let's go get over there. There's a lot of things going on here, so I'll try. Oh, when I when I remember, I'll try and zoom in as much as I can. Because I realize if I zoom out, you might not be able to see everything. So, oh, I can't talk to her. The enemy answer. Oh, it's giving something away there. Sorry. Adair, let's talk to you. Were you looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. Looking for anyone who can make me feel better. He gives an understanding nod and he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. I really like Adair. He's one of the companions we pick up later, by the way. And now for the one of those funniest companions in this game. You see four people gathered by the door of the inn. Their raised voices are chopping gestures. Um, suggest an argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises his hand for calm. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offence. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. <laughs> Ooh, a fight. No, I say nothing. One of the other men glares at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused. You've got a lot of gore mocking us in our own village. We don't take ill treatment from foreigners, especially not Adirans. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fie, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cock's feather! I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. Multiple personalities, anyone? 
Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I might try streaming Skyrim and see if I can get um, into it if I have company. Do you know what, buddy? Genuinely, if you stream Skyrim at times I can watch, obviously when I'm streaming, I, I would legitimately try and watch it often as I can. I love the game. Um, I would suggest one or two modifications to the game before we begin. They don't change the game. They don't, sorry, they don't change the storyline. They don't help you specifically in any way. They just improve the look of the game. And they just adjust one or two small balances that I think should be balanced anyway. Other than that, perfectly standard. Uh, Adir was my buddy in Tank for Pillars 1 and 2. Had to give him a good ending. It, he's, it is great. It's absolutely great. Um, okay, so what's happening here again? Oh, yeah, they're fighting, aren't they? Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. I'm going to say... <laughs> I don't think it's... I don't, I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. And why is that? I can use my perception. He's reaching for something, and since he's not a raper at side, it's either a wand or a throwing dagger. And you don't look ready to deal with either. Who's might? Because then you have to deal with me or intellect. If someone's baiting you, obviously as he is, it's generally wiser to walk away. Let's go perception. They look at each other. One of the men gives the other to a warning shake of his head and before I'm turning to you. We're done for now. But this one better watch his step around here because we're not going anywhere. As the three stumble away, the elf turns to you. The tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. You're welcome. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood and you note the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked in the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath them is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. Uh, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and... So I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was travelling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Oh, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious, what exactly did you find there? Several hooded figures operating the strange machine. Aloth goggles you silently, appearing apparently assessing your earnestness. Finally, he gives you a clipped, awkward laugh. You do manage to find yourself in rather interesting predicaments. Yes, how did you manage to cross those three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. There's obviously a bit of history here. You did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah, that. This is what I hate about this game. It was, it, it was talking, then it won't continue talking, don't I mean? As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints, and the accent doesn't help. I heard the same thing. Just for a moment, he looks you as he's about to say something else. His expression brightens with mischief, but before he can speak, he forces a tight smile, biting his lips so hard you expect to see blood. Finally, his face relaxes and shakes his head. I should speak more clearly next time. My apologies. What are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. 
and you. I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Really, really, that's a really weird thing for my character to be asking right now because why would we know about that? I don't know. Uh, to be fair, I have been seeing some really weird shit. I've been experiencing weird things of late. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. You don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. I should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. So do I. Let's go. Excellent. I shall follow you. So we have a loth. Yes. Right, so a loth's a mage. Now you can see here, can you see? Oh, it might be quite small. He's got a three next to his first level wizard spells. And that means until I rest, um, all the, well, for now, all these are per rest. So I can use three of these and then I have to rest up to get them back. That makes sense. Hello, Becky. How you doing, darling? Um, so I lost, got, so I really want a lost hood, but I don't want to nick it off him. I will get a hood to my character at some point and make him look like my face. Which I'm still getting used to. Um, so yeah, he, he's he's a mage. And they have um, grimoires. So this is actually really quite cool. So they have, the mage has some spells outside the grimoire. But in their grimoire, they can chop and change. Um... And you can actually find other grimoires as you go through the game, which have different spells in them. So you can switch them out when you want to. So a lot of one here starts these ones here. But later on, if I find another grimoire, I can use that instead and get a different spells at these different levels. Does that make sense? It's quite cool. Indeed. So. Just say the word. Let's save this and let's. Um, I think we're going to the end, to be honest. I, I, again, I haven't played this game in years, so there's no sort of method or plan I've got. And this is all, all random and ad hoc from now on. Hey, just came to say hi. It's almost dinner time in Canada. Oh, do you not live in the UK then? I thought you lived in, in the UK. I don't know why I thought that. Actually, I know exactly why I thought that. It's because one of my old mates I haven't seen in years, actually, and I thought about it. His, um, his now wife. Um, sorry, I paused then. My apologies. Sorry to both of you. <laughs> his now wife is, um, Canadian. So, I presume you would live in the UK as well. Just say the word. Um, typical in here. First of all, go steal all this shit. Ah, right. So, you know, as earlier on, I was saying about scrolls. Um, where'd they go? So, scroll of Fan of Flame. So, if I've got two law, I can use this scroll. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't have two law. Um, and a loth. He's already got it in his grimoire, so I'm not going to rebel. him. So, this stealing thing here, that means I can steal. So, if I go here... Let's get my main character and stealth him. Quick and quiet. I don't have like if I go here, you can see like a little circle appears below me. See it? And when that's amber, I'm still in stealth. When it goes red, I'm seen. Until then, I can steal whatever I want. Oh, apparently I, I found a secret. I genuinely didn't know it was there. Potion of Eldritch aim, plus fifteen accuracy for ten seconds. Okay. Cool. Let's. Hmm. I'm looking for name people. There's name people over there. 
Let's talk to the um barkeep. I can't tell if it's a woman or a man, man. Good day, stranger. Woman. Oh, greetings. Welcome to the Black Hound Inn. Please sit where you like. Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't off much away of a good meal today, unless you're fond of a cold porridge. So I can there's a few things I can do here. If I just go I'd like a room. Um, it brings up the menu anyway. So I can rest, and you can see here, depending on how much you want to pay, I can have different rest types. A common room is free, and I just rest up. It's, it's instead of using camping supplies. Of which, by the way, I can only I can only take a limited amount. Uh, and you can see here, this laborer's rest, I get perception in mechanics, and this one here is, is resolve. I can also recruit, and this is really quite cool actually, I can recruit my own adventurers. If I wanted to, I could have all the other adventurers in the game, like all the companions, I can just make my own party, which is quite cool, actually. I can use their store, or I can retrain a character. Now, by retraining, you can change... Let me try to think. I think on your main character, you can change your attributes, I think. And you can trick you can do your spells and your skills and that sort of stuff. But on a pre-made character, like a companion, you, you can do just the spells and that. You can't do the attributes. Uh, she splits her time between here and there, visas and all that. But that's why sometimes you can hear her in my streams. Uh, I thought so. I mean, oh I say I thought so. Uh I, I've obviously heard it before, kind of thing. The Skyrim. That stream was so funny, Becky, by the way. I, I was actually in laughter. A bit of party management here as well. Um, so what I want to do, I want to sell some shizzle first. So, uh, no, I don't. So lock picks. If you're lock picking or mechanic skills not high enough, you can use lock picks to counteract it, if that makes sense. So I'll keep them in my anyway. I don't think I'm using it, so just sell all this shizzle. And again, I'm not going to use any of this. Um, just sell it all. Sell all the armor. Um, I'm going to sell Fan of Flames. Ales, the beers, I'm not going to use them. Uh, you can see here, you can see some things. They do some things. These are really low level things. If I was doing a really difficult playthrough, I'd have to use some ease to like do it. For example, here, here's a mill. So I can use Oh, it looks like you can use it to get rid of something. But I get three might for uh for ten minutes, movement speed for ten minutes, minus two perception for ten minutes, and that sort of stuff. So you can sort of see where you can use and abuse mills. I'm gonna keep that one actually. Uh I'm gonna sell Torches, torches, journals, that sort of stuff. But I'm going to keep with the ingredients so I can use them later. Trade it. I'm not looking to buy anything right now unless they've got any camping supplies, which they have. Um, Just buy one more for now. And that's it, I think. And we're going to rest up because I want the perception mechanics. Let's rest up. Rest. Your sleep is restless and uh, fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed by suffocating, suffocating anxiety. I know what that's like. Uh, you open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of the Guild of Wales gallow tree. It's creaking of ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like a mouldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly her head snaps up and her eyes open. They are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> that makes your stomach drop. Oh, excuse me. Rare occasion here in Hadron stream. 
Her mouth slowly parts and a gust of rancid air as she speaks a word. <laughs> Sorry for the inhaler. Watcher. <clears throat> Excuse me. You jolt awake in a foul smell <clears throat> of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating from your nostrils. Sweat run down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an anamancer. Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel strange compulsion to see this excuse me, see this woman once more. If only to confirm she is truly dead. <clears throat> Ready when you are. You did alright, Barm. Yeah, I have mentioned it um, on stream. Uh, I currently have, and it, this sounds so, <coughs> so much more painful than it is. I have in, inflamed lungs right now. It's just an asthmatic thing. Um, about a week and a half ago, I had a bit of a, a problem with my asthma. It hasn't cropped up for a long time. There's a bit more history, which I'm not going to discuss on stream. But um, it hasn't flapped in a long time. And... I haven't really been right since I'm on I'm on a steroid inhaler. I'm monitoring my asthma up and down in the mornings and evenings and that sort of stuff for the doctor to review soon. And I'm on my inhaler again. So yeah, I'm doing all right. But every now and then, it really, really hurts. And actually last week, I'm kind of glad I didn't stream because last week was extremely painful for me. And I was constantly having headaches and being sick. Well, I'm not being sick, but feeling sick the whole time due to it. But I'm genuinely doing it right now. I mean, not being funny. I wouldn't be drinking wine if I was genuinely, like, really painful right now. But I appreciate you asking. I apologise if that was a bit too much information for a streamer to share. I don't tend to do that on stream. I tend to keep to myself, if it makes sense. Anyways, none of that shit. shit. Let's have a look. Um, let's talk to people. Please move B. Oh... I wonder Ready if when I you can. Oh, I'm not going to be able to. Uh... I wonder if I can. I'll run over here. Quick and quiet. I don't want to be seen. Are you all good, dude? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Quick and quiet. I wonder if I can be really quick and get around these people and unlock that chest there and find what's in it. Go, 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 go. No, it's too quick. No, my stealth is nowhere near high enough. Look at that, though. I just can't look in there. I'll oh, maybe I can. I'll do it. Oh, I can. <gasps> no, 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 no. That's stealing. I think the in guest would be annoyed if I stole that. Ready when you are. I'll get it every time. If I can. I'm just looking around here. Aha. Let's look at this. this open in no As time. promised. Uh, rapier, padded armor, and jewelist hat. Nope. Nope. All my stuff just goes to mustache. So. Who's that? As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from his past seem to call out to you. Reach out for the soul. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> you see a man soar through the air, hitting a nearby wall with nauseating crunch. He doesn't get up. His attacker, a burly, clean-cut warrior with a carnivorous grin turns and shoves his fist into the stomach of another assailant, removing another from the impromptu, from the impromptu brawl. The bar is a whirlwind of elbows, knees, fists and feet, with no end in sight, and he is in his element. In the corner, three smaller men speak quietly, throwing malicious glances at the larger man in the corner, in, sorry, in the centre. He breaks a chair over a tattooed head, Crack, cack, uh, cackling. The trio position. <laughs> sorry, I said crapping or 
<laughs> Sorry. The trio position themselves in three parts of the room. And with a with a terse nod, they charge. Unfortunately for them, the man sees them coming. Something in his eyes burns brightly, and all three slump to the ground in agony. That's all in their minds. The burly man bows to the room of unconsciousness and incapacitated incapacitated before staunching out. Off key, whistling, whistle trailing behind him. So again, I apologize for being crap at reading out loud, but you'll notice there that I kind of looked into the man's soul and that's a big thing for this game. And it will come to light soon. So let's go speak to the woman. We've now got stuff around her, but looks about. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bra that sags at the top of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like a moth eaten linen, bulges over the rope that, sus that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to another when the bridge breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that is no worldly dimension. Reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with a new and familiar awareness. Once you've expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt in your mind, a ringing, electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes. You feel yourself being pulled down some deeper consciousness in a space occupied by only you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with her eyes clouded in a milky fog, and her body still swaying with the wind, and you no longer sorry, you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives you a slow nod of her head. The rope creaks as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, even. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I, wherever here may be. How are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Hmm. I need to understand something has happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consolidate, so consoling a child. Consolidating a child. Bloody hell, what's my name? Callista? Consolidate them in groups. They're dead. They're butchered. They're orphans. <laughs> the world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? 
Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. I knew you'd get it eventually, man. <laughs> Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees though, knows what to look for, and sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. So what that translates as basically is that I can see essentially into the past, the souls of people who are still living, I, I can see what's happened. I can see what their lives have been like. And it's very prevalent in this game where a lot of the clues to the storyline are hidden in the past. And it's, you know, I'm a watcher, so I can commune with dead souls. I can I can see people's uh, lives, that sort of stuff. Sometimes involunt involuntary, but often, Purposefully. It's quite cool. What did you mean when it all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. I think I survived the Beowick. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul, but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? You said souls break apart over time. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again, but less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. I wanted to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. What's an animancer? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins, miserable before they met, empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other, turn their lives around. 
You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. I'm going to say farewell to her now. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Anne was granted the Crucible of Souls. A lot looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you alright? You seemed lost just now. I'm a watcher. His arch eyebrows recede into the, his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin. And I expect this has something to do with that hooded figure in the ruins. Hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about watchers? Only that they're rare and they seem to have unique insight into certain soul conditions. He coughs, as you just demonstrated. They're just and a half. leveled up again. Before I do that, I'm going to speak to Adair. The smell of pipe smoke at once earthy and sweet winds its way to your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-coloured hair leaning against a mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips with an one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, it could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. <laughs> For some reason, that's just reminded me of the... Uh, the comment I made in Dragon Age Origins, where I made a, a height joke. I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you ought to. What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Out of the people around here, might as well be 19. Don't think I'd put you much higher than 22, 23 tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. What makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? He looks at you for a moment, his brow arched. His smirk broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. Never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack, I took you for a Radric at first. <laughs> um, I've been out of sorts lately. Of course, we've all got our bad days when we stand perfectly still and stare at corpses for a while without blinking. <laughs> Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word around here. There'd be any number of Radric bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, Animancers, Watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radric especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. I love it. Two out of three got down. <laughs> of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case... Maybe I'm not 19 after all. No offense. Untake him. Good. They don't mind it. They don't mean it personal when they hang folks here. I have to remind myself. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. The war? Satan's war. The only war in my lifetime. Vela decides he's living incarnation of Aethys. Overthrows Redseus, marches on Deerwood, 
So we gave him a deer wooden hello. What's a deer wooden hello? We blew him up. <laughs> blew him up. Who is Aethys? God of Rebirth and Redemption. Formally, anyhow. Maybe they call him something different where you're from. I had other questions. Ba -ba -ba -ba. What does your what does the town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. There used to be a lot of Aethys worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethys. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethys isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, and then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Aloth glances at you and lowers his voice. You can see why I was eager to leave. If you're next to be hanged, why are you still doing it here? Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out. I just haven't figured where I'm going yet. There's a whole lot of places out there when you don't when you don't think Wildwind's legacy started with Wildwind. Could we travel together? Where are you headed? Some place called Cadnua. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I even remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. I've got to help. Got to make a move, mate. Awesome stream, as always, man. I'll see everyone later. Cheers for stopping by, mate. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop in a minute anyway. I'm just sort of finishing this off, but I appreciate your time and company, buddy. Thank you much for dropping in. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. That's a fine reason if I ever heard one. All right then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. <laughs> let's get going. Right, cool. Let's um, let's do my level up. So. I'm going to do mechanics. You do a six and then I'm going to put a point in. I want to say athletics. Let's get one point in athletics just to so got a point there. You can see how the points advanced do go up quite heavily. So the next time I get, I think it's six points per level. I'll only be able to put one in mechanics next time. Right, so I get, I can basically choose some tier one powers again, or I can pick some tier two powers. These take double the amount of like points. I haven't really looked at these, but I think actually what I want to use is mind blades. I think it bounces between people. Uh, ba -ba -ba co op to target essence, generating slashing blade of force that attacks them before leaping to up to five additional targets. Okay, we'll get that one. I think, is it Phantom Foes? It's f I'm trying to remember from Pillars of Eternity 2 here. Foe AoE. Oh, it's really important, by the way, when you're reading these, you make sure it says Foe AoE. Because if it just says AoE, it means it will affect your people too. Uh, minus 10. Oh, what? Minus 10 enemies need to flank for 28 seconds. Oh, okay. That means that without having to flank them. So this is a mechanic in Pillars of Eternity that was never in Tyranny. 
if you have an enemy in the middle and you have someone on one side and someone on the other side, you can flank them, which means you get a bonus of damage. Phantom Foes emulates that flanking, so you can put it on it, and even if it dares or one of your people is just hitting him and there's none behind them, they're still flanked. Does that make sense? Although I do like Recall Agony as well. I might get there next time, which basically, as you can see there, foe target. 30% of all damage reapplied over 16.8 seconds. So this is where my um, intelligence comes into it, where that's probably, I would say, probably starts at 14 seconds maybe. And because I've got high intelligence, it gives me a little bit more. I'm probably going to, I'm just looking. That paralyzes and uh, am amplified thrust. Uh... That pushes on back quite violently. Actually, do you know what? I think I get Mind Blaze and Amplified Thrust. Then again, I've got, I've got to have the power to use that. Oh, uh, I don't know. Mm. Now let's do Amplified Thrust. Let's see how it goes. Right. Aloth. So you can see here, Aloth has the same sort of things here. So he's got really high law already. That's quite cool. I'm going to give him a point of survival. I'm not going to worry about stealth with him. I'm going to do athletics. He's hit one point in athletics. Then I'll probably just get his law. Hey, do you know what? Soda, I'm just going to get survival up. So yes, just do that, I think. I'll save this point for next time. So this is really, really cool with um, wizards. Uh, but it does give you a lot of choices. I've just got to pick what I want to do. So I quite like these doing um, like some crowd control stuff. I think crowd control is really quite nicely rated in this game even though neurotic lance is really really good it's just as a bam let's hit something mirrored image can help me defend myself vital infused with vital essence just helps me in combat basically that can blind that i'm getting that one because i'm blind them and combusting wounds actually i don't know how good it is in the long run but combusting wounds quite cool it, it basically makes it so when I'm hitting the enemies for 26 seconds, th their wounds can bust, doing additional damage. Uh, confused. No, let's do, let's do those ones. Combusting wounds and curse of black insight. It's AOE stuff, but let's just do it. Done. So... Yeah. Let's look at the quests. So, can I hide Dunk? Oh, so the quests that are still uh, highlighted, they're the ones we can still do. So the Old Watcher basically travelled to Cadnua. In quest here, Fragment of Scattered Faith. Bring a dare to speak with Melwald, which basically is take him to Cadnua. I want to go into here in a minute, but that'll be next episode. Because I think I'm right. God, it's quarter past 11. Sorry, I completely missed the time. Sorry. So yeah, that is the start of our playthrough of Pillars of Eternity. And let me make them big. Let me save first. And let me save because I forget otherwise. Save. So as you can see, it's very different to Tyranny. Tyranny is quite stylized and you're the bad guy kind of thing. And you're on a certain path. This game here, it's like, it's more stereotypical and standard role playing, which I love it. So I know I'm thoroughly going to enjoy this playthrough. I'm really, really looking forward to this, actually. So, uh, yeah. Next time we pick up next Tuesday. So Tuesdays we pick up Thursday night. Uh, we'll go in here. We'll beat up some shit in here. I can't remember what's even in here. We'll look around the rest of Gilded Vale. Uh, talk to some locals. And we may next time make our way to Cadenura. I don't know how long it'll take us. So I'm not in any, any mind to rush this playthrough. Um... 
because I thoroughly love this game and I, I want to give it some patience. I want to give it some time. So uh, we'll just see how it goes. But until next time, I'm going to sign off. I'm, I'm saving the game again. I'm so cautious of this because I'm on Windows 11. I don't think it's going to screw it up. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you like the lore. Um, it's quite unique. I quite like it. And we're obviously a watcher, so shit's happening to us and we need we need to explain it. We can't explain it right now. And so we know right now. So it's a lot to explore. So uh thank you very much, Calista, for saying good stream bam. I do try. And I hope you like all this. I have said this the same. I hope you like all this. I hope it's not too distracting. If I go back to the game, I kind of feel it kind of works. It it kind of looks quite one piece. I don't really like my camera surround too much, but you know, swings and roundabouts. I can technically make this bigger like that, but you know, how far do you go with it? Anyways, I'm going to stop waffling now. Everyone, appreciate your time. I really, really do appreciate your time. And if you've enjoyed this, consider giving a like and subscribing. I do this three times a week, different games, mainly role playing games and action RPGs. And yeah, until then, thank you, everyone. Here's all. Night.